In this video tutorial, I will be showing you how to animate section planes through individually grouped models in SketchUp. This technique should work in all versions of SketchUp, and although the concept is fairly simple, it can get a bit complicated depending on how many groups you are trying to animate. The model I'm using for this tutorial was developed for an audiovisual art piece, which I will link in the description if you're interested to see and hear more. A couple quick comments before we get started. If you're interested in how I model this geometry, just let me know in the comments and if there's enough interest, I can make a video on some of the techniques that I use to get uh, freeform swooping geometries like this. Number two is I am aware my screen recording does not capture my drop down menus and so I apologize in advance for that, but I will try to be as descriptive as possible. Okay, so let's jump in. This is the animation method for the section plane in SketchUp. And so I already have my model here, as you can see, um, and it's already grouped into three separate components. So for ease of workability, I advise pulling them off of one another. So I'm just gonna move that 100 feet that way. This vertical section slice, I will move 50 feet out that way and so I have three models that I'm going to be animated uh, I will be animating with a section plane so the way this works is from using the scenes um, in SketchUp you will animate the section plane so from scene one to scene two a section plane will animate through these horizontal lines so that'll be scene one starting at this end scene two ending at this end Scene two to scene three will be sec uh, animating a section plane through this model. And then from scene three to scene four, we will be animating a section plane through that model. So let's start with the first one. I'm gonna double click, open my group, go to tools, drop down to section plane. I'm gonna lock my section plane with the arrows in one direction here and after I drop it, I'm going to just kind of move it right through to the end there, like that. And here I can set my scene one, and we don't have to necessarily work, worry about camera angles yet. We can do that at the end. So I just want to get started with, uh, I'm going to the view menu and dropping down to animation, animation, add scene. It's asking me if I want to save a new style. Sure, because we're going to update all those later anyways. So in my scene one, this section plane is active and you may have already experimented with kind of pulling the section plane manually through the model, which is a lot of fun to see, uh, but that, that doesn't work here um, in terms of setting a new scene and moving the same section plane. What you need to do is drop a new section plane. So I'm going to the tools menu my section plane tool, dropping a new section plane and making sure the arrows in, are in the same direction as the first one I dropped. If I move it too far off to the other side of the model, the arrows flip and then you'll get some kind of weird um, rotating and flipping of the section plane, which is not what we want. So I'm just going to drop it kind of anywhere in the model and then select it and move it to the end of my model, it doesn't have to be perfect. And now since this one is active, I am going to right click on my scene tab and say add. So now I know between scene one and scene two, this section plane should be animating and it does. And we will hide the section planes later. If you like to keep them visible, that's certainly an option too, uh, but I'll show you how we will update all of the section planes being hidden in the different models. So now we have our first model complete. We are moving on to our second model and I'm gonna start in scene two because I know I want my section planes that I drop to be active starting uh, in this scene two. So I'm gonna double click in the second model here, go to view, sorry, tools, section plane, drop a section plane. So basically the same process 
and here it was one to two for the first one now it's two to three for the second one so it looks like it should be active already in this scene two and so we're going to drop another section plane which is now making this new one that we just dropped active and i'm dropping it and sweeping it through to the end about the same and i'm going to right click on scene two and say add so now I've added a new scene, three, and this section plane is active in that scene. So if I go back to scene two, what happens is it still thinks this new plane that I dropped in this model is active, but in reality, we want this first one that we dropped to be active. So you have to go back to your scene two, click on the first section plane in the second model, right click. I know you can't see the model, but you say active cut and it'll make that cut activated and then you want to update your scene. So now between scene two and scene three, you're going to have this model sweeping. Okay. So same thing for the next model. I'm already in scene three. It looks like that doesn't necessarily make a difference, but just for kind of ease of sequence, we'll keep moving forward like that. I'm going to drop the plane section plane. Move it all the way through to the very end. I'm gonna drop a second section plane. So just so it's clear again, I mean, each of these two section planes that are associated with the scenes are being dropped inside of the group that I want to be separately animated. Uh, and so that makes certain that these section planes, once we overlap the models again, are not conflicting with the other models they're just pertaining to each individual group so we just uh, activated a second section plane and i'm going to make a new scene right click add scene four so i know that that's active in scene four but like we saw in the last time if i go to scene three this section plane is still active so i'm going to need to activate the first section plane in the third model. So active cut, update the scene, don't forget. I'm right click, update. So now if I go to three to four, I have the skin animating. Okay, so easy enough, right? Now, let's take a look at overlapping the models. I'm gonna move these back into place. This one was 50 feet. This one was a hundred. Okay. And obviously the scenes, I mean, the cameras are going to be all goofy, so you'll kind of have to reset them now uh, per your interest. So I usually like to start off with um, kind of getting up close and then uh, with those horizontal sweeping lines, they'll kind of like burst out of nothingness and start flowing across the scene. So something like, like that is probably appropriate, uh, but you have to go, you have to make sure you're on the scene before you update it. So we'll see here that um, in our scene one, none of the appropriate section planes are activated. So actually what I'm gonna do is make sure we're gonna go through our scenes again and make sure that uh, all the first section planes in the individual models are active in uh, all of our scenes. So for instance, scene one to two, this looks like this is correct. Scene, uh, but in the, in the second model, this is not correct. So I'm gonna select the first section plane in the second model in scene one and right click, activate the cut and update the scene. Same thing in the third model. First section plane, right click, activate cut, update the scene. So you might have to do this as you go through all of the separate scenes. And we'll just take a look at what that looks like right now. Scene one, everything's good. Scene two, okay, scene two is correct. From one to two, I wanted the first one animated, but in scene two, now again, I need to make sure in the third model that the first section plane is active. So I'm right clicking, activate cut, update the model, don't forget. There we go, so now scene two, everything looks good. Scene three, 
So two to three is correct. I wanted everything visible in one. Uh, two to three is the animation sequence for the vertical slices. And then from three to four, let's see. Okay, perfect. So now I will go ahead again and overlap the models 50 feet. hundred feet okay so now if we go back to our scene one like I was kind of mentioning about setting the scene um, now you know you can kind of get low get up close and personal with it and you know you can still obviously see all the section planes and you can't really see your model while you're working with the section planes activated so uh, you can go to your view menu and unselect uh, section cuts so to not make them active and that kind of helps you work with the model just make sure you don't update your scenes um, while the section cuts are not active because that will change their active status in your scenes so this is just really to make the model visible while you select your uh, camera angles so like I was mentioning, something like this is probably appropriate for the first scene. I'm gonna go back to my view, make my cuts active. And then also in this scene one, while it's active, I'm gonna to go to the view menu and I'm going to turn off the section planes. So now that hid the actual planes themselves and I'm gonna right click on the scene and update it. Update, save as new style. So if I update the selected style, it should change all of the uh, settings. So I'm gonna do that and let's see if that worked. It did. So uh, if you update the, the setting, the scene setting by hiding the section uh, planes in the view menu, it'll automatically hide them in all the scenes after that. So, um, so the scene one, one looked pretty good, but scene two, I want my model to kind of be, um, let's see, that is the time when my horizontal lines are fully animated, but my vertical slices are just starting. So let's just take a look. I'm going to update the scene here like this, update. So from one, okay, that's good. All of the lines are uh, visible in the view. So I like that from one to two are my horizontal sweeping lines from two to three. Now let's see, obviously not the camera angle we want, so we can set this more appropriately. And maybe we, we want to sort of continue rotating the model that way, or you can rotate it back the other way. I think we'll just, uh, for the sake of the video, kind of keep rotating it out in a way. So I'm gonna update the scene here. So let's go back to two. All right, looks good. Two to three. My vertical section slices come in and then my scene four. And you wanna make sure that you actually click on the scene four uh, before resetting the camera angle. Otherwise, if you were in scene three and you move the camera and you just right click on scene four and update it, uh, it's gonna update scene four with the section planes the way they show in scene three and you don't want that. So that's just a little disclaimer there. So again, let's rotate the model while I'm on the scene four tab so that I know the model is the way I want it. And I'm just gonna do kind of a elevation view there, update it. So now if I go back to scene three, I'm getting everything animated. And you can control um, the animation uh, settings in terms of speed and the delay between the uh, different scenes in the, the view menu. I have it selected right now, but you can't see uh, down to the animation tab and then the settings. And there's just a few settings, not many. But uh, if you wanted it to go faster or slower, that's definitely an option. So I'm just going to start back at scene one and kind of run through it with you guys and then we'll conclude with uh, the animation again. So from one to two, get the horizontal sweeping lines. From two to three, 
the vertical section planes start to animate and then from three to four the skin sweeps in so there you have it um it can get a little difficult at times and tricky kind of with the different layers so that's why i definitely advise working um, by sliding the models off of one another uh, your different models just remember the, the different section planes need to be inside the different groups um, each set of section planes pertains to the model that are inside the individual groups and yeah give it a go let me know what you think and if you need help just leave a comment and i will try to get back to you as soon as possible thanks for watching